If you have your Bible, turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. And it's in the book of Proverbs, and this is in the NIV Bible. And the Bible says, The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp down or gulp theirs down. The wise store choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. Another translation puts it this way, that there is precious treasure and oil in the house of the wise who prepare for the future, but a short-sighted and foolish man swallows it up and wastes it. I think that uh, in this modern day, era where we live that we have opportunity to purchase online where Amazon is always at the disposal you know uh, Walmart being right down the way or whatever your spending habits may be the Bible says that the wise and the mature believer manage their resources wisely somebody say wisely mm, wisely yes um, or, or prudent, as the word puts it. But while the immature squander them. You know, in Jesus, he had a lot to say about riches. He had a lot to say about finances. And he even talked about the prodigal son who had received his inheritance and he squandered and he lived righteously. And he came to a point where he was eating with the pigs. And the, and the honey, you know, that's not the will of God for us, that we would have to suffer. You know, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that the God, that God, he, he adds no sorrow to what, when God gives you something, you won't have sorrow attached to it. And I, I think that can be used as a measure stick. What do you think? What, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? That if you're, if you have received something or purchased something that is now causing you sorrow, I think that that gives us pause a bit to ask whether or not God gave it to us or not. Amen. That, that, that's maybe I'll just hold on to that for my for myself. But we have this awesome responsibility to be wise, even though we've missed the mark. How many of you have missed the mark? We're constantly missing the mark. And if we are constantly missing the mark, you know what do they say that uh, uh, when you do something over and over again, expecting different insanity. That's, I think that's, that's insanity. But insanity is when you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. You know, so that if I'm not getting the results that I desire because of my spending habits, I might want to put a pause. Now, here's the wonderful thing about God, is that God is a gracious God. I mean, all of us have missed the mark in our finances in some way, shape, or form. But I love that God is gracious to forgive us from when we make our mistakes. First of all, we got to recognize we made the mistake. And so... We need to ask the Holy Spirit that he will show us and, and teach us how to be better, somebody say better students. Better students. I know one thing for me, I can, I can be a better student. You know, I don't have to have a, a hole in my pocket. Huh? You know, there, there are times in life where you, you put money in your pocket, it's like it's burning a hole in the pocket. But again, we ask that. Look, when, when I was a child, but when I was a child, I acted like a child, spent like a child. But when I became a man, in other words, when I matured, when I grew up, I then understood how to handle finances better. Is that all right? If you're ready to give this one, please stand to your feet. Amen. Glory to his name. Yes, yes. When I was a child, I, I thought like a child. I, I acted like a child. I spent like a child. But when I grew up, when I matured to the things of God, glory to his name, I became wise. And you know, the Bible says that the wise store of choice food. That's a very important word. Choice food and olive oil. That means there's none on it. So, Father, I pray for those that are here this morning and those that are watching online. That, Father, that there is this olive oil, this fresh anointing that will come upon their lives as it relates to their finances. Their checking account, their savings account, everything that they set their hands to do, Father, that you will cause it to prosper. You said you were beloved, I worship of all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And that's my prayer for you this morning.
Amen? Amen, amen, amen. All glory to his name. Blessed be the name of our God who reigns forever. And if you haven't noticed yet, I want you to know that God, he's so much very interested in your finances. The question is, does God need money? Absolutely not. Does the church? Absolutely it does. In order for us to, to, to be what we worship and, and to do the things that God has called us to as a ministry, how many know that finances are very important? Just as important as finances is it for your own home. Amen. If our hearts and minds are clear about our giving this morning, amen. And those that are watching online, we thank you for our covenant partners and those who are, are being a blessing to this ministry. We pray that, pray that we're being a blessing to you as well. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that the people have come, they've come with their tithe, they've come with the offering. And that, Lord, we pray that you will pour out blessings that they won't have room enough to receive. That, Lord God, that, that you are not only getting things to them, but through them. That they may be at the hand of God in the earth today. Now, Father, I pray that you would lift every burden and destroy every yoke as it relates to their finances. And that you will cause us and help us, Holy Spirit, to be better stewards of that which you have given. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the people of God say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And we will do our uh, giving confessions that we speak to our seed, our funds freely given. And command them to go, prosper the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May it grow, multiply, and return to us in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I need to ask you a question. How many of us actually believe that? Amen? you, you got to come to a position that you're convinced that you're believing that God will cause everything that you set your hands to be will prosper. Amen? And when you give towards God, you can have an expectation to receive. Amen? Oh, bless his name this morning. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Don't no, matter when you just play on the air, morning, please. I, 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 I feel a move and a shift in the atmosphere because we... We've given back into the Lord. And I believe that when we do that, that we cause a, a, a change to take place in the, in the atmosphere. Because the enemy don't want you to give. The enemy does not want you to be able to give back to God a portion of what he's given you. I am constantly reminded when God says the gold is mine. The silver is mine. God says that the cattle and a thousand hymns. He says everything belongs to me. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you and give you permission to rest, to rule, and abide on the inside of us. That you will open our eyes that we're able to see. That you will open our ears that we're able to hear. And, of course, more than anything, Father, we ask that you would give us a heart to be able to understand what we believe Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. Oh, Lord, be the voice behind the curtain this morning. Behind the curtain of our imagination, Lord, that we be able to, to hear fresh revelation from heaven this morning. Many of us are here that need a breakthrough in, in every area of our lives, God. And we recognize that there is an anointing that's on our lives for this burden removing, yoke destroying power of God that it would dispel the works of the enemy in the name of Lord Jesus. And for that we give you praise. And for that we give you much thanksgiving. Oh, glory to God. And it is in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It is so good to see all of you this morning. And we welcome those that are on the channel this morning. You know, I, I, I feel this the weight of the anointing of God that's on our lives today. And I know that many of you are under pressure. And I want you to know that that pressure that you're under is not from God. The pressure that you're under is that the enemy, he, he, he's been found. And he's trying to apply pressure to your life because he wants to see you fold. But I am so reminded when Jesus told Peter, he says, Peter, I pray for you that your faith 
fails not. In other words, that the word of God will not fail in your lives. Can you see that? And so uh, this year we've been, been teaching on the vision for Harvest Christian Ministries International. And I pray that it's been a blessing to you. And, and some may think that it might be beating a dead horse, if you will. But I believe that by repetition, that I believe that these things will become ingrained in our lives. That we begin to, uh, as, as, as Minister Thomas said, that we begin to, to live out the word of God. That we become this vision. That it is not just mere words on the screen, but it's, it's being embedded in our heart. In the name of Lord Jesus. Turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. This is our base scripture as it has been all year. For this is the year of fixed purpose. And the scripture is found in the Passion Translation Bible in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Ready, read. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. You know, I, I, uh, at the beginning of the service that we were in deep conversation about these distractions that have been happening in our lives. And, and, and you know, we begin to, to count off one, two, three, four, five, all the different things that have been happening just in the last week or two. It, it, it may be an issue with the car. It, it might be an issue at the house. It might be an issue on the job. It might be that stub toe that you got. It might be the cold or the, 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 the sickness that may be plaguing your body. These are distractions. Right. And, and I learned something about uh, these distractions that this is the enemy that's coming against us because we have found him out. Yeah. We've called that joke around. Yes, yes. You slew footed devil. We've called you out that you have you, nothing of you will be found in us. Yes. Glory to God. I know some of you feel like Job this morning. Yes. I know, I know you're here uh, Because I know if I feel like Job I know certainly that some of you feel like Job this morning But I have been encouraged And I am persuaded That absolutely positively Nothing will separate us from the love of God Glory to his, to his name I don't care how much debt it looks like I don't care how much the body hurts Nothing shall separate us From the love of God Glory to God. So we continue in this teaching on the, uh, we're now in the third section of uh, the vision of Harvest Christian Ministries International. And we've been teaching the last couple of weeks about that we are a mature, supernatural body of believers full of the Godhead bodily. And so we're working on this first portion of that. And so we are a mature, supernatural body of believers full of the Godhead bodily. And this vision, which has been declared, and we see that it is not a pathetic, but a prophetic vision, is a projection of where we desire to be in the ministry of God. We've not yet fully arrived, but I believe that we're on that particular road to the maturity that God has called for us, and that we're pressing uh, uh, towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you see that? And so we have this anchoring scripture that we've been using for uh, calling those things that be not as though they were. And this was Paul as he was teaching uh, the believers in Rome. And in his Romans chapter 4 verse 17 in the Amplified Body, uh, uh, Amplified Bible, ready, read, as it is written in, written where? Oh, in the scripture. Mm -hmm. I have made you a father of many nations in the sight of him in whom he believed, that is, God, who gives life to the dead and does what? He, he does what? He calls into being that which does not exist. Calling those things that be not as though they were. How many get some issues in your life that you, you, you want to be able to reverse that thing? That I, I want to call those things that be not as though they were. In other words, that you're calling forth your victory. Yes. Right. Glory to God. That, that while you're in the battle, I'm calling forth my victory. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have all the answers, but I, I, the end result is that I win. Amen. Uh, Pastor Carol and I, we, we've had this discussion here of late that it's the skirmishes. How many know that there's a war? Right, and then there's skirmishes inside of the war. And, and, and we win enough skirmishes, and watch this, if we get enough first downs, if we get enough, first, keep getting the first downs, 
eventually you're going to get to your victory. Can you, can you see that? Woo, Jesus. And so Paul, he was making this reference of those things that be not, call those things that be not as though they were, is that he was talking about Abraham as to the miraculous birth of Isaac. And not only was it about the miraculous birth of Isaac, but it was also that he was talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was the first begotten of the dead. And so he was calling those things that be not as though they were. In other words, that dead situation now came alive. Some of you have some hopes and dreams that you have long since forgotten about. But God says, I'm stirring it up. Glory to God. He says, you need to dream again. I'm a, how many of us need to learn how to dream again? Because life will come against us in such a fashion that we, we forget all the good things that we've been desiring. And that we're just treading water, trying to keep from drowning. When God says, no, I've got not just a buoy, but I've got a boat waiting for you. Glory to his name. So because of this prophetic vision here at HCMI, I want us to be able to see that God has called us forth out of nothingness. We said this last week that God has called us from various parts of the earth that we could be right here, right now. And I constantly say this, that if God did not know that at 1047 in the morning, on the 9th of June, 2024, if he didn't know that every last one of you was going to be right here, right now, then guess what? This preacher don't need him. If he did not know that, then I don't need him. I can do all of this on my own. But maturity says, I do need him. Can you say that? So we've been called forth from a place of nothingness into a place of existence for such a time as this. I want to encourage you this morning that wherever your lot in life is, that God has you on the planet specifically for a particular purpose, that nobody can do what God has called you specifically to do. Amen. Your DNA is not like any other. Come on. That I don't know what it is about the job, I don't know what it is about your neighbors, I don't know what it is about within your family structure, but God has you on the planet for a particular reason. And you need to be able to find out what is my assignment. If you don't know what your assignment in life is, you need to start asking the creator. Can you say amen? amen? So God, he's called us, not only by his name, not only has he called us to holiness, but he's also called all of us to maturity. Mm, that, that we would grow up in him, that he, God, he has given us Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish this. Now, last week we had this, a biblical definition of the word mature. And I want to add to that is that maturity means completely worked out. It means fully digested or prepared. It means ready for action. How many know that as believers, we always need to be ready for action? How many know that there's always someone who God will place in our, in our, our vicinity that we need to witness to? And I'm always reminded of this thing that uh, uh, preach the gospel everywhere you go and if necessary, use words. So it's not so much about what you're saying. People observe what you do. And some of you that are here right now, that you have family members that are constantly watching and seeing how you're handling life's distractions. Are you going to fold under the pressure or are you going to stand up and be the man and woman of God that God's called you to? Are you going to have a backbone, brother, won't you? Hmm. So again, this biblical definition of mature, it, it, it means made ready for destined application or youth, and I like this, it means to be perfected. I don't care what stage in life you think you're in, but God has called you to perfection. Can you see that? It involves becoming more Christ-like in character and in our conduct, as described by the Holy Ghost in Scripture. In 1 Corinthians, in the expanded Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, Again, we, we talked about this scripture last week, but, but when we're talking about maturity, this is some kind of good. Ready, read. When I was a, a, a what? A child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I stopped or I set aside those childish ways. We're called to maturity in God, that we've been birthed out of the, the, the call of God of our lives to this prophetic vision. That we must grow up. We must become more accountable. 
There are people that are depending on you. This ministry is depending on you. Those that are watching on the channel, they are depending on you. Yes. So when you show up, when, when there's this mandate when God says to forbid not the gathering, not to forsake the gathering of yourselves is important because what happens is that you bring your gift to the table. It's almost a type of potluck. You ever had an office party? It is a potluck. Everybody gets to bring something. You, you bring your favorite dish and, and next you know it's, it's a wonderful setting. So when you show up, what happens is, is that, that I believe that Holy Spirit, he, has, he can go from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Glory to God, that we be able to partake one from another and that we walk away the better. Can you see that? And so we are called to this, again, this maturity. And Pastor Carol and I, and, and as is any pastor that's on the planet, they have this overwhelming, or should have, this overwhelming desire that you be clothed in the word. Dick and Delicious, I see that you have on this beautiful orange attire. When, when she walked into the sanctuary today and, and she, she gave the announcement, I said, who is that? I mean, because it's so vibrant that what we see is the vibrancy of her personality. Can you see that? And anybody that knows her knows that, that she has this joyous attitude about her love of God. I see other colors of, amongst you and what it's doing, it, 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 it does something to the atmosphere. Yeah. And the lighting just hits it just right. Can you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but as pastors, what, what we desire to be able to do is that you're clothed in the word. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We, 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 we go over scriptures here and there and everywhere. We scripture, scripture, scripture. All right, pastor, when are you going to stop in the scripture? I'm not. Because it's our responsibility is to clothe you, to dress you with the word of God. If I got to be clothed, you, you don't want to see me up here naked. You, you, you need to be clothed in the word of God. Can you see that? You know, the Bible talks about the armor of God. Now, that's another message, but that's, a, that's the armor of God. We want to be clothed in the word of God this morning. And so we want to be able to give you this information and pray that you get revelation. And that we inspire you to do the word. Amen. That's our responsibility. That we've been commissioned to present you. Watch this. We've been commissioned to present you faultless before the Lord. Let me just tell you something. You know, pastoring is not an easy job. I remember my, my dad in the faith, he, he said, son, he says, you know, uh, preaching is the easy part. <laughs> he says, pastoring is where you learn how to grow. Because you're going to have different situations and different circumstances and, and yes, various sir. types of people and backgrounds and it, it's going to stretch you. Amen. You're going to find out exactly who you are and why God called you to this ministry. Do you always have an answer? No. And he says, don't, don't make nothing up. Can you say amen? Right. Glory to his name. But, but we've been commissioned to present you perfect. Perfect, Brother Kurtz. Perfect yes. in Christ. And we're always lifting you up before the Lord. Yes. And then the other day when I was, I was going over there, the Lord kind of showed me like that. Uh, what is it? The Lion King, when he, he's lifting up somebody, you know, just lifting them up before God. That we, we, we literally have this attitude that God, whatever they have need of. And so even when you're not in our presence, we're constantly praying for you. You know, I, I can tell you there are times I, I, I roll over and Pastor Carol's not in the bed. But she's out in the study. And she's praying for you. Right. And make me feel bad sometimes. I just roll right on over. I'm just going to tell you now. I roll, roll right on over because my time is coming. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and so she has her time and I have my time. But collectively, we're constantly praying for you. And I will tell you this. Thank you for praying for us as well. Amen. Turn your Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, and this is in the expanded Bible, Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, ready, read. So we continue to preach or proclaim or to announce Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn or to instruct or to admonish and to teach everyone in order to bring each one into God's presence as a what, what kind? mature person. In Christ. You know, the Apostle Paul, he had this enormous responsibility to present every church that he established to bring them into God's presence as this mature person in Christ Jesus. That every church 
he had to present before God. So he, he had to, he, look, he, Antioch, Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, Corinth, Ephesus, Galatians, the believers at Rome. Paul had this responsibility. He had to present every last ministry, every last church. He had to present it before God, holy and perfect. I, I think about my spiritual dad, our spiritual dad, Apostle Tony Brazelton. And I think about all the different campuses and all the different uh, locations throughout the earth now that they have established ministry. And he has this apostolic call that's on his life. But I realize that he's got to give an account for every single church that's established. You know that's pressure. And so therefore what has to happen here is that you then establish leaders. And some of you that are here, we establish leaders to help carry the burden of the ministry. Can you say amen? So, Paul, again, he had to present the church. That's an awesome responsibility. That we have to give an account for you when we go before God. God asked me where some of you are in particular. You may be watching on the channel here. You're not here physically in the building. But God is always asking me, he, or in, in this wise, that where are they? When God said to Adam, he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I hid myself. I hid myself amongst the stuff. I hid myself amongst the trees. Because I was naked. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Who have you been talking to? And so I want to be able, we want to be able to clothe you in the word. So that you are not naked. That you're not exposed. Just tell you that you're not exposed. Not exposed. So you're not exposed. Nobody wants to see your nakedness. Glory to his name. I will say this this morning. We said this last week. Is that our maturity, yours and mine, is not determined by how long you've been out of the womb. Our maturity is not determined by how long we've been out of the womb. How many times the, the, the sun has, when the earth has rotated around the sun. No, you, listen. Age has nothing to do with your ability in, in your growth. In Genesis chapter 1, another scripture we went over last week in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. In the King James Version Bible, God said, let us make man in our image. He was talking to Moses and giving Moses the backdrop of, of everything that was going on and how things began. And he says, after our likeness. And let them, talk about mankind, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him male and female, created he them. When God created Adam and Eve, he made them both physically mature. There's something to be said about not having a childhood. Many of you here may have been in a situation where you had to grow up really quick in the house. Mama might not have been there. Mama may need had to go to work and, and you were left to take care of your brothers and sisters. And so much that you didn't have the opportunity to have the childhood that you desired. And that's a lot of pressure on a child. And so what happened is you miss out on certain parts of your childhood. Adam and Eve never had a childhood. They didn't, they were never pushed through a birth canal. They were made mature. So there was an expectation that you I made you mature, so there's this expectation that you operate in perfection. They had this expectation that they walk upright before the Lord in all of their ways. Now, we don't know how long it was from the time that God placed them in the garden until sin showed up. The Bible doesn't tell us how long that took. We don't know when the fall actually happened. Although they were fully grown, they fell into immaturity. They were tricked by the enemy. They were distracted. Can you see that? Duped into thinking that God was keeping something from them. Listen, our lack of maturity can become our downfall if we lose our fixed purpose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have to remain Focus. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and this is in the Phillips Bible. 
And I love how it reads because it, it ministers to so much more to me. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, Yet it is in him that God gives a full and complete expression of himself within the physical limits that he himself uh, set himself in Christ. Moreover, your own completeness is, not, is only realized in him who is the authority over all authorities and the supreme power over all powers. That our maturity level at the highest form is Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that we are in him and he is in us. So there's this expectation level that we operate in perfection. Can you see that? All of who God is rests in Christ and we're in him. The power for us to grow up in Christ already resides in us. The answer is already in you. If Holy Spirit is in you, the answer is in you. God's power, I, we said it this way last week, it's like a nuclear power of who God is residing on the inside of you. That Holy Spirit, that he has this abounding love for you. And power of love and, and might and, and the ability to, to get things done. That God's his nuclear power plant is on the inside of us. You need to know who's in you. Amen. Glory to his name. And Jesus Christ is the fullness of the deity. Yeah. The fullness of the Godhead. Yeah. Dwells in bodily form, completely expressing the divine essence of who God is in us. To be able to handle this awesome responsibility, we must grow up into the maturity of being in Christ Jesus, that the world might believe. The first man, Adam, he failed in his spiritual maturity, but in the second man, Adam, Jesus Christ, we get to soar more than anything. And I declare a, a spiritual, spiritual a, a growth spurts. Some of you have children when your, your kid was this tall for a long time, and then all of a sudden, boom, they got really tall. And I'm, I'm praying that we will experience growth spurts in the spirit, that we will mature up quick, fast, and then in a hurry, so that we can handle what heaven is pouring out. You know, I don't want anything being strained from me when heaven starts pouring out. I want to receive it all. Have I got a witness this morning? Glory to his name. I want to go and finish up today, and I want to finish up, but I want to look at the life, the young life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 2. In Luke chapter 2, and that's beginning at verse 41, and this is in the King James Bible. And the Bible says, now his parents, talking about Christ, Jesus, the, the, the little Jesus, or the young Jesus. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the, 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 the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposed him to have been in the company when a day's journey. And they saw him amongst their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, you like that? Three days. After three days, they found him in, yes, the temple. <laughs> Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Verse 47 says, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And verse 48 says, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49, will you read that with me? And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. In verse 50 says, and they understood not the same which he spake unto them. <laughs> and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. 
I've got three observations and I'll be out of your way this morning. The observation number one is that Jesus, although at 12 years old, he understood his identity and the call of the father of God uh, was already on his life. Yeah. When Joseph and Mary located Jesus, he said to them, he's wishing not that I must be about my father's business. Then why would you be looking for me anyplace else? Don't you know I must be, got to be, about my father's business? Jesus, yes, the son of God, he showed an immense self-awareness of his fixed purpose. Well beyond his years, indicating uh, this type of unique maturity in his spiritual identity and his mission. We can glean much from Jesus that that his level of attentiveness to the word, it will grow you and me up in the things of God. Yeah. Observation number two. Maturity in age did not have a factor as Jesus, as he engaged the religious leaders. Notice that he was found sitting amongst the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> I know we got some educators in the room, but listen, he was found sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Yes. For, for, nothing brings more joy to an educator when the student starts asking questions. Right. <laughs> Are we students of the word where we begin to ask God questions? questions. His, his intellectual and spiritual maturity was being displayed mm, at 12. Uh, that Jesus, he knew the word, but not only that, but because he, the Bible says that he was the word. Yes, yes. John 1, verse 1 through 3 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word mm, was God. The, the same was in the beginning with God, that all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. Glory to his name, where that was made. We, we, yes, we, all of us need to understand the significance of the custom of that time. We have to understand the custom of that time, the custom of that time, that in the temple, only the rabbis and those who conducted the teaching sat down. Come on. Come on. We, we, we get a little twisted these days. While the students stood up, the teachers sat down. Mm. We, we have it backwards today where the teacher stands and the students sit. Our current setting, if in Jesus' day, this setting would be absurd. Mm -hmm. I, I'm teaching from this elevated platform while you look up to listen to the words of a teacher. But you'd be surprised of how much those of us that teach from this platform, how much we learn from you. Mm. Your mannerisms. Your glare. Uh -huh. Your inquisitiveness. Your gaze. Your smile. The silence. The laughter. The hallelujahs. And the amens. Glory to his name. Jesus, he sat with the instructors. His maturity was even healed with his wisdom. I love that. The rabbi and the teachers in the temple were amazed at his understanding and his answers. But upon the backdrop of your imagination and mind, can you hear the voice of this 12-year-old child speaking the oracles of God? I know many of you have children and they've said some things that, whoo, where'd you get that from? That that had to be from God because I did not teach you that. And they certainly did not teach you that at school. That there's, there's inklings uh, and there, there's little pictures that you begin to see how God has begun to speak to your children. Yes. And speak through your children. Yes. Do not demise, do not undermine or undercut what your children are saying. Right. They have some, I, I, me personally, I, I believe that when children get here, and we call it baby talk or babbling, but I believe it's the, it's, it's the language of heaven. That's what I believe. But we teach them our language of English. We teach them our language of Spanish. We teach them the language of the earth. But I believe they come gifted already with the voice of heaven. So this suggests to me that a divine inspiration and an advanced level of spiritual and intellectual maturity was being displayed. That with Jesus amongst these instructors, that class was in session. 
child. And the young Christ child was teaching from heaven's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Observation number three, and I'll be done. One would be blind not to see the unique balance of obedience and independence of the Lord Jesus. Despite his awareness of his divine mission from the throne of his heavenly father, Jesus returned with his parents and was obedient to them. Imagine. Just imagine. Upon the backdrop of your imagination that you have lost the son of God. For three days, you don't know where he is. Some of you here that are parents, you may have lost your child for a couple of hours and you thought it was the end of the world. Anybody ever lost a child? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been lost as a child? The mama left you at the bus stop, wherever, or left you at the park, and you're like, I want my mama. But if you've lost a child, I don't care if you're at the Walmart, they hide in between the clothes, you wear my child. Especially if you have active children that like to play hide and seek. Have a got a witness? But they lost the Son of God, and you don't know where he is. You think mama has him. You think that daddy has him. You think that auntie has him. But no, you must find him. And there's a message like that. I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if you caught that. Not only does mama might not have him, not only does daddy might have him, but you have to find him for yourself. Mm. Can you imagine Jesus? He, he didn't beat his chest declaring, I'm the son of God. You, you don't tell me what to do. Mm. I'm grown. No, no, he didn't say that. He said, you don't tell me what to do, mother. Joseph, you're not my real father. You don't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not my real dad. He, 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 didn't, he didn't do that. Mm. He, he, he didn't do that. He honored them. He was well aware of the commandment that was given to the prophet Moses in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, to honor mm -hmm, thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, that the Lord thy God giveth thee the first commandment with promise. This balance of understanding his divine role while still respecting and obeying his earthly parents show his comprehensive maturity. Blending spiritual insight with practical obedience. We continue to teach in the vision of ACMI that we are a mature, supernatural body of believers full of the Godhead Bible. Stand to your feet. Glory to his name. Father, we, we have this overwhelming desire to be better than what we are. And that desire comes because of your nuclear power plant that resides on the inside of us. All of us have this Superman suit underneath that we want to become the super upon the natural. That the anointing of God is upon our lives in such a fashion that we can do things that no ordinary person can do. God's super upon our natural, giving us the ability to do the things that we could not do naturally. That we are overcomers, that we are winners. We're in this war, but we have to understand that we've already won it. Yes, we're going to have a skirmish here, a skirmish there, but again, we just want to keep getting the first down. Yes, There's a defense that's always up against us. But when we study the playbook, when we study the playbook, yes, yes, when we make it to the meetings, yes. when we hear what the coach has to say, and the coach is not me, coach is Holy Ghost. That we can go to the line of scrimmage, you understand? And hear the quarterback belt out the, the plays. But the, the, the quarterback, he looks over the defense of what the enemy is trying to do. Or what he's planning to do. 
And I love this. And this is where Holy Spirit comes into play. That, that there's a defense that you're not familiar with. And it looks like it's going to be something that's going to cause you to be defeated. And he calls an article. A Holy Ghost article. That above all the noise in the stadium. Above all the distractions that's taking place in life. You hear the article. That means a change of play at the line of scrimmage. And it is at this line of scrimmage that we're meeting every single day. Every last one of you. But how many know that every play is designed to be successful? More than anything, Pastor Carol and I, we want to see you to be successful. And one of the ways we do that is clothing you in the Word of God. If you're here today, and if you're watching, and you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior. It is so vitally important that we come to know who the Savior is. Because without Him, you're going to keep getting sacked. You're going to lose yardage. And you're going to find yourself in your own end zone. And not the end zone of the enemy. The analogy, it works however you want to play with it. But again, our maturity is everything. If you're here today, we have this scripture in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. And it's in the King James Version. And if you're watching and you don't know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, and you don't know what it means to be saved, those that are here with us, will you read the scripture with us? Ready? Read. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in that heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is as simple as that. There are no other hoops that you've got to jump through. That salvation is the simplest thing on the planet. We've got to stop complicating this gospel. Yes, we need to be holy. Yes, we need to spend time in the world. Yes, but salvation, you got to get there. In the name of Lord Jesus. So when you pray with us, for those that are be watching or, or maybe present that don't know Jesus, will you say the simple prayer with us? Father, I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. You have promised me in your word that I will be saved. I want to live this life on your terms. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead and that he's seated with you in heavenly places. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. We believe that if we say that simple prayer, that yes, truly that you're a seed and that you are sealed until the day of redemption. You know that the Bible says that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory to God. And God says that no man will be able to take you out of his hand. Glory to God. That, I don't know about you, but you ought to be excited that you are in the plan and the will of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible also says that God is going to give you a new name. That Aretha, your name is not going to always be Aretha. Pastor Carol, your name is not going to always be Carol. Pastor Dave, your name is not going to always be Dave. But God has a specific name, which is a, a rock with your name on it. Jesus. I don't know what it's going to be, but I look forward to being there to get it. Glory to his name. Oh, bless his name. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe that if you need to rededicate your life, that that prayer that we just prayed, it covers that too. You might need baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of being able to pray in the Spirit as the Spirit of God gives others utterance. Or you may be here, you, you might need a church home. Here at 1775, San Juan Road here at Harvest Christian Ministries International, we would love to be called your home. 
we're in the fastest growing area in all of Florida, here in the Four Corners area. And if you aren't aware of that, just look around. It's growing so fast, and, and, and God has us planted right here. And we're so glad to have you this morning. And if we just look around, if we invite someone, if we drag someone, if we bring someone to worship, we double overnight, just like that. And that we would walk in the call that God has concerning us in Acts chapter 2, that every time the doors of the church were open, that he added to the ministry. Glory to God. We thank you for those that are watching. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the people of God today. Thank you for giving us the joy in our heart today to know that we can be in you and that we can grow up in the things of God and that we're spiritually mature and physically the mature to be able to handle what you have for us. We love you for that today. Father, I pray, Lord, for the people of God today that something was said or done that would cause their heart to turn towards home. We thank you for healing and restoration to everyone that's here. We pray for supernatural growth spurts to take place in our lives, Father. That you would take us to another degree of faith, another degree of, of level in you, Father. Father, I pray that the anointing of God continues over their life, that their burdens be, be removed and yokes being destroyed. We thank you for health and healing to all of their flesh because your word says that they're wonderfully and fearfully made. And for that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the people of God say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We believe that something good has already happened for you today. Again, that something good has already happened for you today. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the people of God say amen. Amen, amen, amen. And remember that the harvest is truly right. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen.